Chris Williams, Cyclone Fanatic, covers Iowa State, joins us on 365 Sports with Paul Craig, and I'm David Smoke. Chris, thanks for your time. So what has changed with Iowa State? Is it the schedule? Is something changed? What's going on with Matt Campbell and his Cyclones? Better question is what hasn't changed. The The whole thing's different. Um, I, I give Matt a lot of credit. They, they came into this season – and, you know, there there was the gambling thing, right, where yeah. you lose five starters on offense, your nose guard. Um, and, but, but you still, at least, if you're Iowa State, you had that defense from last year to fall back on, top ten nationally. You know, it was really good. They just they turned the ball over too much and they couldn't score. And, you know, they come into this year and – they're okay in this opener against Northern Iowa, but then the next two games were really, really just abysmal offensively. It was clear uh, to anybody watching the team that they just hadn't made the strides that they needed to make up front. They're working in a new quarterback. You know, think about this, guys. Quarterback, running back, starting, starting quarterback, starting running back, starting tight end, starting right tackle are all out on that offense because of this gambling deal. And they're playing right now 17 freshmen per game. So, you know, a couple of things have happened. One, you know, those guys who they really like have gotten some reps. But two, I give Campbell credit because they, they changed after that Ohio loss. They changed the whole offense up. You know, they have completely opened things up. They, instead of playing, you know, playing to the defense, like you thought they were going to do really ugly things up. They have completely relied on this freshman quarterback, Rocco Beck, and they have trusted him, and they're using the whole field. And I think what that's done is that's made the line better, right? It's easier to block when the defense doesn't know what you're going to do exactly. And it's really come together nicely for them. Yes, the schedule is lightened up, but, you know, the way I look at it with Iowa State is, you know, I think Texas and Oklahoma are kind of at a different, you know, hemisphere right now than the rest of the league. And I think Iowa State's very able. They're not going to beat every normal Big 12 roster, but, it's, you know, Campbell's in, what, his eighth year? Like, there's continuity there. They're a developmental program. They should be able to win a lot of these games. And I think it's just, you know, that with this young of a team, they had to take their lumps early. They did. I think that they have developed a lot since the beginning of the season, and they're playing their best football right now going into, you know, that Baylor game next week. So Rocco Becht was the guy they turned to, and I know a lot of Iowa State fans thought it would be J.J. Cole instead. What did Rocco do that that over that allowed him to overtake J.J. Cole? He's just more – he's just ready. You know, mm-hmm. you could see it that Cole played a lot in the opener, and, and he was fine, but he looked like a true freshman. He's thinking the, the game was moving fast. Beck, I mean, if if anybody didn't know, like, their recruiting rankings and you watch the two guys in the opener, anybody in their right mind would have said, that guy looks like he's ready to play and this and this guy doesn't. And that's all it is. It's J.J. is a true freshman. Not only that, he's a young true freshman. I mean, he, he's, he's going to be like a junior or senior in college before he can even legally drink, so he's a really young guy. <laughs> and, you know... They don't have a great line. They don't have a very good running game. Like if I'm Matt Campbell, I'm sure as hell not putting my prize, you know, freshman quarterback out there. And it's it's been the right call. Rocco Beck is a, you know, really intelligent kid. His dad's a head coach in the XFL, played the NFL. Like the kid's been brought up around football. He's a film geek. And he's, he's pretty darn athletic, too. Um, and that's one of the things he has over Cole, where he, he can kind of roll out a little bit, you know, with a subpar line. And I just think that he can handle it more right now. And, and I think it'll be better for J.J. long term, too. Because to me, you know, especially at the beginning of the year, like I don't see the point in, in getting your true fresh. They, there's not a lot positive that can come from him getting hit that much, getting his teeth kicked in and um, – you know, he's. Got, I think he'll be a better quarterback because he's been able to sit and watch for a year. Chris, what have you thought about the? the I mean, you mentioned the running game has been uh, not that great, and I know they've got you know young guys there as well, like Eli Sanders and and, and Norton, and among others. But uh, the receivers, I mean, Noel's 
great player. Uh, got also Higgins there as well. So just kind of in, in terms of the, the weapons around Beck, how have you seen the development there, and what excites you about what you see? Well, the running game has really come on, and I, I, I credit that because the passing game came on, to be, to be frank. I, I think that it, it opened up a lot. I think that they've always had capable athletes at running back, but it was, you know, you've got to have somewhere to go. And they've been able to really open that up a lot in, in the last couple of weeks because they've spread things out. I mean, they're, they've got 10, 11 guys catching passes every week, which is, you know, that's an awesome stat. Like, it makes it hard for a defense because you don't know where it's going to come from. Noel uh, is, is a really good kick returner. The guy I'm really bullish on is Jaden Higgins. He's um, transferred from Eastern Kentucky who – they tabbed him as a starter the day they saw him come in in the spring. Uh, they loved him that much. And he had his breakout game last week against Cincinnati. He had like 172 yards on like six catches. So, like, he was very explosive. I think he's the guy back half of the year that will be, you know, talked about probably on shows like yours more. And then there's another one, too, who you, you don't probably know his name now, but keep an eye on his name, Ben Bramer. He's a true freshman tight end. Caught his first touchdown last week, but he is huge, and uh, I, I think they'll keep working him in as well. But they, they've got a lot of really nice weapons, guys. It's just, again, they're so young. So I think with that, you just have to expect some up and downs. Right now, things are up for the Cyclones, but it's like, you know, I was warning fans last week. It's like, hey, they won a couple in a row, but like, this isn't like some Iowa roster that, you know, or Iowa State roster that can just go out there and sleepwalk and beat a good big 12 opponent it's it's not going to be like that but man i, I give him a lot of credit it's, it's a after that ohio loss man things have gotten yeah. really down around here and it's completely turned the corner you got people talking about bowl game and having an outside chance at dallas which is crazy early i'm not saying that but just the fact that fans are even thinking about it shows how far that's coming upon yeah, you know, and, and the fact of doing it with so much youth, we had a, a note from somebody that's an Iowa State fan that sent a note to me about that they might have, you mentioned, what, 17 freshmen and all that you have coming back if you can get to a bowl game, first of all, and get back on track and then have a loaded roster if you can recruit them back to your roster. That's that's a great future. No doubt. <laughs> I kind of wish it was a different era of college football, yeah, right? right. You know, you, you would be really excited. Iowa State's doing the best it can with the NIL world, but it, it certainly doesn't have the money that a lot of its big 12 brothers do. But that's where Campbell, you know, guys, as far as that goes, though, like I'm a firm believer that these players, first and foremost, they want to play. Mm-hmm. And a lot of these guys that are playing right now at Iowa State and getting these great, great opportunities to develop probably wouldn't be getting that in a lot of other places. And, you know, you just hope that Iowa State can come up with enough to keep them around because I agree with you guys that they do. I think that Campbell, you know, I've been around Iowa State 20 years now and like this new big 12, it feels like the first time in my career where I could look at it and say, okay, Iowa State's finally like punching it in the class. Like there's not a single program in this new big 12 that Iowa State, you know, cannot aspire to be like or or be on a regular basis. You're not you're not going to be a football powerhouse, but like it's man, the playing field's a lot more level. And I feel like the continuity that Campbell's had, just being there as long as he has, having his coordinators stick around for the most part, that's a real plus. Uh, for, I think for any program going into this new era. Yeah, Chris, I, I agree with you. I think that you know. Outside of whatever Deion Sanders is going to do for however long he's in the conference, you know, because that that recruiting uh, circle is probably a little bit different than where everybody else is going to live. Yeah, I, I think it's you know, why would you not if you're Matt Campbell want to stay and you know play for a conference title every every few years? Where Iowa State, like you said before, playing for the conference title was such a foreign idea to them. Yeah, I mean they they never did, other than the one the COVID year, right? Twenty and they. It, they lost Oklahoma in that one, but beyond that, like I don't know, if they've never won a Big Twelve championship, and it's just like, especially now, like I mean, I don't, you know, nationally college football, like us guys, we like talking about the playoff and everything, but it's just like, well, now it, it's actually kind of realistic with the new setup for any of these programs to to jump in. All you got to do is win your league one time, and boom, you're you're in there. So, 
Yeah, I, I think it's a really interesting thing. It's like, okay, if you're like a guy like Matt Campbell, maybe you take a million or two less per year, but you're, you're you think that you, you believe in your process that you can consistently be in the upper half of this league, and then you have a peak year and you can jump in there. Or, okay, do you want to go coach in the Big Ten or the SEC, and you know, go take over Purdue and try competing in that league going forward? Like, I, I, I think it's really fascinating and. It, it to me, it's a lot like these players too. It's like if you're JJ Cole or Rocco Beck or whatever, and some SEC team is going to give you a hundred thousand more, and we want you to come, but you're going to be third string. It's, these guys want to play, right? And that's that's where I think Iowa State's going to hang its hat. And boy, what a fascinating world too, though, where you have 17 true freshmen playing. I mean, that wouldn't have happened 10 years ago, and it shows you Campbell's not dumb uh, getting these guys on the field the way that he is. No, yeah, it's fascinating times for sure. Uh, it's weird and wild and an interesting landscape that we're in right now with college football. And yeah, I, I like I like that you mentioned like seventeen freshmen, but also like gotta you can't just plan that they're all going to be there for three and four years, you know. So how how coaches navigate all this will be uh, really interesting with with it all shifting. But uh, Chris, I mean, the, Iowa State hangs their hat on defense. They've always done that. Um, how would you just size up? Obviously, the unit's good again, but how would you size them up just in comparison to maybe what we've typically seen in recent years? Well, they, they haven't been as good. Uh, I'll, I'll break it down to you. Their secondary is probably the best in Iowa State history. They've got two really good corners, two really good safeties. Um, I, TJ Tampa is probably the best corner you guys will probably see all year coming into Waco. I mean, he's a legit, like, potentially could sneak into the first round, like that type of a guy. Um, you know, they have, I, I would say their D line is what they've really been able to hang their hat on with this dime stack. They've, they've always had a guy in the middle that can take on two and then it frees up an edge. Um, it hasn't been as dominant this year. Uh, they haven't been bad. They've been okay. I think where they've really taken a step back is at linebacker. Angles haven't been as good. But I will say this though, like in their credit, the last two games I think are the best games that that linebacking core has played. They're really young. They got a true freshman, uh, Sadowski playing there in the middle. And, you know, we'll, we'll kind of see like, uh, Oklahoma abused them, but Oklahoma is going to abuse a lot of linebacking cores, right? Yeah. So, but they, they really were dominant last week. I mean, it was a really, I don't know how good Cincinnati is, but I tell you what, like uh, it, that that game wasn't even as close as the score would have indicated. They're they're getting better. Uh, I don't think they're as good as they were a year ago. But man, when you lose a guy like Will McDonald, you know the first round, of, it's it's hard. And but I, I think Haycox is as good of a defensive mind as there is in the league. And you know, I I told my audience like I would buy the stock of the defense when it was low a couple weeks ago just because Haycock, right? Because you know. He's going to get those guys schemed up in the right spot. And, you know, against a couple of not great offenses in TCU and Cincinnati, man, they've looked pretty good. So if they can, if they can keep going at this rate, I think they got a real shot to get six and get to a bowl game, which seemed unfathomable a couple weeks ago. Chris, we appreciate your time. Cyclone Fanatic, it's a great turnaround for Iowa State. And uh, whether they keep it going or not, we'll see them in a couple of weeks. And who knows? If Baylor's in the middle of yet another longer they're winning be, streak, or I would say coming off favored win, in that yeah, game, yeah, I would think they'd be favored in Waco, no matter what Baylor does in Cincinnati, where they're an underdog. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate your time as always. That's Chris Williams, Cyclone fanatic. Dan Hope covered.